Yeah, I think we're starting. Sounds like we're starting. I feel like we're starting. Check one, check, check, check. Looks like I sound good too. So I think I'm up and running. Somebody tell me if I'm up and running. Hello. Uh. <coughs> Hi everybody, it's Mike Myers and welcome to the Monday edition of the Mike Myers live stream. Ask Mike anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies for CompTIA certifications. Now here on the Total Seminars channel, we concentrate primarily on uh, CompTIA certifications. The big three, certainly A+, Net+, and Security+, but we're certainly more than comfortable going outside of the big three and even going outside of CompTIA certifications in general. So we are here for you. Yay! All right, so what's happening today? Uh, so first of all, a couple of uh, ground rules. We start here at two o'clock Central Daylight Time. I'm in Houston, Texas, and we will run till three o'clock Central Daylight Time here in Houston, Texas, or until the questions run out. So as long as people are asking me questions, we're in good shape, I will go ahead and answer those questions for you. Uh, the way you answer me a question is uh, type it right here into the chat window. Uh, at the, if you take a look at this chat window, at the top it probably says top chat. Go ahead and hit the pull down, change that to live chat. That gets the uh, algorithm out of the way so I can see things more accurately. Also, uh, where it says live chat, go to the right, those three dots. Uh, you might want to toggle your timestamp. Make sure the timestamps are showing up, folks. Uh, we are giving stuff away today, and those timestamps definitely help uh, so that you can uh, do what you need to do. <sighs> so what's happening? Uh, not too much today. Uh, yet another dental appointment today. I, Dave Rush says I don't look too lopsided, but I feel very lopsided, to say the least. Uh, so, But we're okay. Ah. Take care of your teeth, kids. I already gave that speech last week. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, okay, so uh, basically you ask me questions by typing them into the chat window. If you're the shy type, though, uh, and you'd rather uh, ask me a written question, feel free to just send me an email. My email is michaelm at totalsem.com. You can send me an email, and I will talk about it online. Uh, if you're a gamer, I'm uh, Senor Pepe on uh, Steam. Is my uh, Steam. And I'm Desweds at just about anything. If you're ever trying to get a hold of me, well, the best way is michaelm.totalsem.com, but I am here for you. All right, so let's go ahead and start diving in. Yes, we are giving away a CompTIA voucher today. Yes, we are giving away practice questions. Uh, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, let me get some announcements here. Uh, so uh, next Wednesday is my two years of doing this. Woof. This corona has been a long, long time. Uh, anyway, uh, so Wednesday, March 30th, this upcoming March 30th, uh, we're going to have the usual CompTIA giveaways, but on top of that, we're going to add four more contests, okay? So the first one we're going to be uh, giving away is uh, third prize is another Total Seminars, so we'll get, just do it another uh, uh, Total Seminars course. In fact, we're going to do that for second prize as well. And I'm always nervous when I start announcing these prizes and all I can see at the bottom of my screen is that Dave Rush is typing something, which always terrifies me that I'm saying something I'm not supposed to be saying. I think I got it right. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, first prize. Okay, first prize is 90 day free access to all practice tests, simulations, video courses, and other subject from the total test. Basically, we're gonna open up the entire library to one lucky winner. And then the grand prize, like that's not enough, <coughs> the grand prize is gonna be one hour of one-on-one -on -one personal time with Mike Myers. Um, Mike, let me, I'm just gonna read what Dave Rush has said here. Mike will be at your disposal hmm. via online connection for up to one continuous hour to help you basically talk about almost anything you wanna talk about which I'm glad to do. Oh, so Dave Rush is correcting me. Hold on a minute here. Third, ah, so the third and second prizes are any total seminars course on Udemy. So the third and second prizes are going to be, or we should just say two second prizes, right? Uh, are any of our Udemy courses. So great, fantastic. So you probably wanna be here next Wednesday, people. We're giving a lot of stuff away. 
Now, do keep in mind that for those of you uh, who are just kind enough to be here, uh, our, uh, we are always, as we always do every, every time we uh, do an AMA, uh, we have a 50% off of a combination ebook and practice test. So you want an A plus, you need the A plus book in A plus practice questions, we give you the whole thing 50% off. In order to take advantage of this deal, all you got to do is head over to www.totalsem.com. That's T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com. Head over to the merchant area, grab an A plus ebook and a A plus total tester, and you will automatically get 50% off. Uh, you have to type in the word circus into the code window before you uh, uh, fulfill your order and we just knock 50% off. How good of a deal is that? And again, folks, this is this Wednesday. So we're talking two days from now, March 30th. So it sounds exciting. And I do have another dentist appointment on that day. This is crazy. Always floss, kids. That's all I can say on that. No, you know what got, you know what messed me up? is I quit, uh, I quit sucking on Nicorette. I no longer have any nicotine in my system. And uh, in order to get rid of that, I sucked on Altoids, <coughs> which are pure sugar. And I would park them like a piece of cheek, cheek, like a dip, like a red man dip. That's uh, chewing tobacco. And uh, so now like, yeah, I messed it up, oh, it's a mess. <sighs> Don't grow old, kids. Don't grow old. All right. So anyway, those are the basics. We got a lot of exciting stuff going on. Uh, so I'm going to dive in now. Let's take a look in your in our chat window. Uh, anybody has any particular questions? Let's see. We go. Actually, we do have one from 108. Goodness, that was a while ago, almost an hour ago. Uh, this is good old Rainbow Jesse 1246. Hey, Mike. My question for today is: I I came across a practice question about a DB9 is a connector associated with which type of port? That's a serial port. I thought the answer was parallel because it's two rows. No, 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 no. Rainbow Jesse 1246. It's a DB9. That was the big secret. Now, if they'd have said uh, DB25, then I would have said it's a parallel port. If you'd have said DB15, I hope we don't have any of those questions anymore. That would have been an old joystick port. But DB9 is a serial port. And... Uh, Yep, and, and DB9s have two rows just like uh, DB25s do. So DB25 is the parallel, DB9 is a serial port. I know it's an old question, but by golly, it's still on the new A+. So DB9s are for sure. So that's why. It, it's not two rows, it's because it has nine pins. Now VGA has 15 pins in three rows, but we don't call that a... a It's called a VGA. Alan Duggan, where have you been, young man? We gave away all the money. Andre's here. Wilson Kunzwana, good to see you again, Wilson. Told the wit, of course, Will Shaw, whether you could see a buddy, Mr. G. Oh, I need some, I need some tea too. Ugh. All right. There we go. We're looking for questions here, folks. Mm -mm. Patricia Grace is here. Hello, Miss Patricia. Good to see you again. Mr. G, looking good. Uh, no, but I am down 35 pounds since January 4th. So got a good run going. We're just, yeah. Dropped a couple of LBs since the last time I saw you, Mr. G. 2.02 p.m. Super, super Omar. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Good. I have a good question for you. Always good to have good questions. Have you ever thought about making a Total Seminars app so people can log in and access the Total Seminars resources? We do. Our app is called, you ready? LinkedIn and you to me and all of our customers who use our products. That's, I know what you're trying to say, Super Omar, but we're a wholesaler and we use other uh, sources for retail. Alan got a job? I didn't see that. Uh, congratulations, Alan. Ali, howdy, Mike. Always good to see a good howdy. Uh, sorry for my stupid question, but I'm really confused. Is AHCI an interface, as the name implies, or a protocol? It's a protocol. Uh, it, it, it's a protocol. But you got to keep in mind, protocol is tricky phrasing to use. Uh, 
but it, 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 with the way you're looking at it, it's a protocol. It, it is not a physical interface. So the challenge you run into with different ways for your computer to talk to your uh, mass storage devices is, you know, what do you want them to say, all right? Today, almost all mass storage devices hide behind this gatekeeper, which can manifest as a controller driver, if you want to call it that. It is a driver. Um, and AHCI, which is actually a pretty dated interface now, well, but that was the one that really started the whole concept of separating the cylinders and heads and sectors per track and all that goo really uh, separated that from the uh, operating system itself. So hopefully that helps. Clinton Hinton, Curtis Hinton. Ooh, I need that voucher A+. Plus. We're giving one away today. Uh, Cole Walsh, Mike, last Wednesday I passed my core. Oh, congratulations. Big round of your out. Applause to you, Cole Walsh. Well done, sir. Kevin Lopez, what are some good PBQ practice scenarios for the pen test? <coughs> Kevin, I don't know right off the top of my head. Uh, I'm going to have to... Uh, Kevin, you're going to have to send me an email. Kevin, 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 send me an email. Kevin, send me an email, michaelm at totalsem.com. And uh, Kevin, you're writing that down, right? Kevin Lopez, I'm talking to you, man. So write down that address, my friend, and uh, send me an email, and I'll, I'll see what I can do in terms of giving you an answer on that. Good performance-based question practice scenarios for the pen test. There are some good ones, but it's tricky for me to know which ones to recommend quickly. All right, uh, so a couple of other things. Guys, do be aware that uh, there is, I, I, I don't want to say that I have a Discord channel. I do not. Uh, but there is a Discord channel out there. Uh, it's actually in the uh, link right there at around 2.06. Uh, please check out our uh, the Discord channel. Uh, everybody you see on here is on there. Uh, and it's a great place to go to. Uh, Curtis Hinton, do you know about the iPhone? Uh, iPhone. I do not speak iPhone. Uh, but hang on, do you know about the iPhone AirPlay issues on Roku TV? Where's Michael Smyre when I need him? Uh, Curtis, uh, I don't know the answer to that. However, Curtis, what I will tell you is, Curtis, do check out, right above your question is the link to the Discord channel. This is a perfect kind of question to ask the Discord channel. We have lots of great techs who show up in there, and uh, Curtis, there will be people who know how to answer that question. Uh, so Curtis, grab a camera, you don't have to, that's always nice. Grab a camera and a headset and talk. Everybody on there is really, really nice. Uh, and I think you'll find some great answers or at least some good opinions on the Discord channel. That's literally what it's there for. So good, good timing on that question. Uh, Jared Graham. Good to see you, Jared. Oh, now we got a big scroll. So still two years at this and I'm still tortured by the way this... Stupid thing scrolls. Catherine. Uh, yeah, you understand, Catherine. Yeah, well. My dentist says I can. my teeth can be saved. So, by God, we're going to do it. Andre de Groyer. Growing old if fun up to a certain age. Yeah, I got to watch myself. I say it too much. Candy Obsessions at 209. Hi. Hi, Candy Obsessions. Stevens IT Essentials. Hello, sir. Hello, Stevens. Trey Dilla. Hello, all. Man, we got some good newish names here. Jenish Patel. Good to see you. We're not making... Oh, somebody... But, so I'm actually monitoring the Discord channel as much as I'm monitoring this channel. We just had a bunch of people pop on. So, yeah, guys, I, I can't uh, tell you how good that deal it is. Uh, Christian. Hey, man. 210. Uh, first time watching your live stream. Been looking forward to it. Welcome aboard, Christian. Stick around. Win some free stuff. Janish Patel, Mike, where should I apply for an IT-related job until I get my CompTIA A-plus certificate? Everywhere, Janish, everywhere. Uh, remember that IT certifications are for your next job, not necessarily your current job. Uh, 
the, the biggest mistake that people make, Jenish, is they don't apply. You have got to apply. Well, I don't fit that criteria. I don't fit that criteria. I don't fit that criteria. It doesn't matter. Apply anyway. Uh, if a job says entry level, they will put extra things on. Look, they don't say entry level unless they mean entry level. They're going to put two years experience on an entry level job to scare you <coughs> because they probably don't want cowardly people applying for this particular job. Maybe it's a you know, online kind of job, something like that. So always, always be applying. Uh, Jenish, I could go on, uh, 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 I could go on LinkedIn right now and find gazillions of jobs for entry-level kind of stuff. Now the problem is, is people get picky about entry-level jobs. Look, I don't care what my entry-level job is. I don't care how much it pays. If it's paying $10 an hour, you're only going to have that job for three months anyway, six months tops. And once you have a little bit of experience in you that people know that you're legitimate, you're going to get hired at other places. This is the big mistake that most people make. The first two or three years in IT, it's not uncommon for you to bounce around a number of jobs. Now, after, after about two years, three tops, you start to find your niche and then you tend to stay at jobs longer. But it's, it's very common to bounce around, especially at first. Andre, got the right answer. Anywhere they're looking for someone. Uh, it must be me. I remember you. Uh, 212. My instructor is doing three of the CompTIA study guide chapters a week. I'm having trouble keeping up. Do you have any study suggestions? <coughs> three. I'm doing the math here. That's like a 12-week course. 12... 12 week course times 40, that's 480 contact hours. Um, yeah, the, the secret is, is uh, practice questions. And if you have a video or something, you can refresh. Uh, so if you're doing three chapters a week, and that comes out to about 12 weeks, and assuming you put 40 hours into that week, that's 480 hours of study, which is more than double what I recommend to people. So I think you're doing okay. Now, what's, now that I'm looking at this, three study guide chapters a week, I'll bet you're not even putting 10 hours a week in because you have algebra and all that other stuff. It's 300. No. Three, 10, 30 weeks. Hmm. But it's still 300. That is a fast clip, but it's not insane. You should be using practice questions heavily. That's your practice questions. The only reason practice questions exist, as far as I'm concerned, is to let you know where you're at study-wise. And as long as you have a good confidence that the practice questions you're using uh, mimic the look and feel and quality of, of the CompTIA questions, it doesn't matter who you use. Of course, mine are the best, but there's other folks out there too. Uh, Howard Robinson at 212. Mike, I have to ask, what is your worst IT problem you ever had to fix? Uh, the worst problem I ever had that I had to fix was a bunch of engineers who thought they could fix computers and they broke many, many, many computers. So it wasn't a skill issue, it was a people issue. Most of the biggest problems I've ever had in the world of IT is dealing with thick-headed users one way or another who won't stop sticking their finger into the frying pan grease, no matter how many times I tell them that if you stick your finger into the boiling oil, it will burn you. So that's about it. Jamal Merriweather, good afternoon. Good to see you, Jamal. How are we doing on time? Well, it's only 20 minutes. Uh, Isaiah, what's this giveaway I was hearing about? Well, Isaiah... Stick around, mon frere. We will be giving some stuff away right here. Uh, Majara Majek, there's a good Irish name. Great way to add some... Okay. Uh, Scott Wolf. Hi, Mike. I'm having trouble finding a job after getting my CompTIA A plus a few months ago. Can you offer me any suggestions? I have a bachelor's in IT. Ooh, Scott, that might be part of your problem right there. Uh, if you already got a bachelor's in some form of IT, you didn't say what. You just said you have a bachelor's in IT, so I'll assume it's computer science. 
Um, is there a reason you're not going into that? Here, Scott Wolf. Scott Wolf, send me an email, man. I want to hear about this a little bit more. Scott Wolf, send an email to Michael M at totalsem.com. Especially in this day and age, I'm very surprised anybody with a degree who isn't quickly getting a job, I would, I, I'm, I'm going to be curious, are you not doing well in the interview process? But we'll find out. Send me an email, we'll talk about it. Uh, uh, Marco.io, why is Red Hat mainly used for Linux server machines? Because they've worked hard to establish themselves in that particular sphere. Uh, Red Hat are, is a, it's a, a great box. And the other thing that Red Hat does is remember the operating system's free, but Red Hat sells some of the best support you've ever seen in your life. So if you've got a problem with your operating system, uh, the Red Hat guys will appear on parachutes as needed, which is uh, a big reason that I think it's there. And to me, what is, is, is there anything that's, is there any Linux box that's not a server? Is there any Linux box that is not a server? If it's not a server, that means it's probably a workstation. So if we take out all the Linux I IoT devices, I would claim to you that pretty much all Linux machines are servers. <laughs> Super Omar 64, you're going to pass the 1002 by the time EID comes around, which may or may not be in May since it's based on, ah, okay. Go for it, Super Omar. You have my full support. Wilson Kunzwana at 213. Hi, Mike. I know you have a whole lecture on MBR and Troubleshoot OSs. Please help me understand when to use the commands, boot rec, fix boot, fix MBR, and rebuild BCD. When? <coughs> First of all, Wilson, the probability of you ever having to use these manually is very small. Most of the time when you put Windows into a Windows repair environment, it will run those things in the back. You don't see it happening, but they're being run. Uh, in particular, uh, Fix boot is designed to boot, uh, God, it's been a while since I've done these. Uh, boot rec fix MBR is gonna be unique towards MBR drives that rebuilds the actual master boot record. Fix boot is used, wow. All right, Dave Rush, this is a good one. All right, Wilson, you got me. Dave Rush, let's go ahead and do a uh, little talk on system rebuilds, that would be fun. I'm going to write these down because Wilson, the thing is there's actually more to talk about here than just answering your questions. So I'll tell you what, maybe on Wednesday, uh, we'll have a little chat about doing repairs. So Wilson, please come back on Wednesday. Dave, we can do this on Wednesday. I, I know we've got a lot of giveaways, uh, but we can also do this thing for Wilson too. Because uh, there's more to talk about Wilson than just you know the three times you need this. Howard Robinson, by the way, thanks for your course. I was able to, so you're very welcome. Thank you, Howard, good, good stuff. TC, I'm going to try to stream our fair's demolition derby to a nearby barn about 100 feet away. Any ideas on how to do this? So, no. TC, this is another kind of question where that Discord channel is designed for this. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, we've got a lot of great techs on the Discord channel, and I'm not afraid to say some of them are better than me. And TC, the problem here is that there's so many questions I would have to ask you to help you figure out how to stream your fairs demolition derby to a nearby barn. TC, I don't even know who you are, but I want to party with you already. <coughs> to a nearby barn about 100 feet away, there's a... It's going to be a very expensive uh, projector for a 100-foot throw. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Electro Belton, how does the giveaway I'm hearing about work? You're about to hear about it. We're about to start our giveaway here today. Janish Patel, can I also... Yeah, Janish, you can send me an email. Anybody can send me an email. 
Uh, Trey Dilla. Trey Dilla. Good Lord. I haven't seen you for a while. If you are an interviewer for an entry-level IT position, what kind of questions would you ask? The questions I'm going to ask are, I don't really care. I don't care about your technical skills that much. Uh, it's an entry-level job, so I'm, I, I'm picking up people who are new to this industry. And my bigger concerns are dependability, transportation, sense of responsibility, integrity, intelligence, uh, kinesthetics, being able to look at things and figure stuff out. So that's the stuff I'm going to be interested in. What I'm not going to be interested in, I doubt that I would ask you much more than what kind of computer you have at home. I'm always nervous. If somebody doesn't know what kind of computer they have at home, what do they know about computers? So that would be uh, one thing. JS, hi Mike, what software would you recommend on tracking web activity for MyFi's connected to my network? I don't know. JS, so JS, do keep in mind that, you know, my skill sets really concentrate on more entry level type of uh, security. And in fact, to be honest with you, JS, I don't know what a MyFi is. So let's look up MyFi. My, MyFi is a brand name used to describe a wireless router that acts as a mobile Wi-Fi spot. I wonder if that's what he means. MyFi. We're reading about MyFi. What is MyFi? A small portable computer that acts as a mobile hotspot. It's a mobile hotspot. All mobile hotspots have always been routers. Okay, I know what this is. I don't know why they have to use a name like that, but okay. So, right back. Hi, Mike. What software would you recommend on tracking web activity for MyFi is connected to my network? Well, I guess it would depend on the type of router I have. Uh, you know, a lot of the uh, OpenSense types routers, things like that, have a number of different types of uh, tools in there. Uh, without being fancy, it wouldn't be that terribly hard to set up logs within the router. Again, when you say MiFi router, that could be anything. You know, that could be like, like, like saying internal combustion engine. Uh, maybe you gave me an exact model that you were looking for. Is, is this a model? MiFi is not the official word for a mobile hotspot. It's the brand name for Novatel's pocket router. Okay. So I don't know about this one. They, they've had stuff like around this for 30 years, uh, 20 years. Uh, what I will tell you, it's uh, almost all of these devices that you're talking about have some kind of built-in logging that's either turned off or you usually have to turn it on because asking that router to look at every URL that's being hit is a log heavy function. And so not only do you want to make that log, but that log is probably one that you want to download fairly often, uh, have it cyclic, because it could end up filling up whatever router storage space you have. But that would be the first thing I would look at. The alternative would be, and I don't know these Novatel MiFi 7000 wireless routers at all, but what I will tell you is that in all probability, they will have some kind of maintenance port or feature like that where you could uh, plug Wireshark or something like that into it. Again, that would be a massive amount of log information. So if you're just trying to be nosy about what people are doing on your router, you might be better served uh, to use, and I'll bet if this MiFi is like most of them, that you can uh, set up a page that makes people go through that's not going to make it any better. Yeah, I think it's log files. That's probably the best answer. Interesting. JS, typing MyFi like I'd know what that is. Super Omar 64, same here. I try to apply for IT jobs, but then I get rejected. Dude, people are getting rejected all the time, okay? I tell most people that they need to do about 200 resumes. So Super Omar 64, I'm going to have to ask you, Oh, 
If Super Omar, if you've done like 10 resumes and you've been rejected on 10 and you're like, wah, I'm getting rejected on 10, I, then I don't know what to say. If it's more than that, but I'm always glad to help out guys. I need to warn, Punjan Kavi, same year, I have a master's in cybersecurity. I'm having trouble landing a job. Punjan, do you live in the United States? Uh, it's always interesting. I, I'm not sure. Pujan, if you have a master's degree in cybersecurity and you're having trouble landing a job, my concern would be that you are in a place that doesn't give jobs. Uh, cloud jobs are rare. Cloud jobs are extremely rare for entry-level people because nobody knows who you are. This is interesting. We have this many people mentioning they're having trouble finding jobs. That makes me want to, like, do something. Have another conversation about this. So what I'm thinking about doing is all you guys who are having trouble finding jobs, I'd like to talk to you guys. I've sent my email up. Uh, I, I want to talk to you guys. And maybe we can have a conversation about why people don't get jobs in places where jobs are extremely plentiful. And uh, be prepared to be embarrassed. I, we won't use names, so there won't be any fear of embarrassment. Most of the time when I find what sounds like highly qualified people not getting work, most of the time that points to is that you are a terrible interviewer, you're applying for the wrong jobs, you've created wildly inaccurate ability, you know, I will not work weekends. <laughs> yeah, you will. Hell yeah, you're going to work weekends if you need to. Well, I can't lift more than 25 pounds. Well, you know, all right. But every time that you start making rules, you start carving out more and more people who are willing to hire you. And again, don't think I'm picking, I'm not even picking on Super Omar 64. I need you guys to think about that. Let's go ahead. I've, hopefully I have some emails coming in from you guys. Uh, we will have another conversation on this. Uh, we had one <coughs> about a year and a half ago. Uh, Dave Rush. Is Andrew Hutz even on today? I don't even know. Uh, Dave Rush. Let's do a uh, job thing. I want to have like a few hiring. Let's get some HR people in and let, let's pull some of these resumes up and let's start talking about it. I'll be curious to see what they have to say. All right. Trey Dilla, thanks Mike. You have an Asus laptop with a 3070 in it? I'd like to see that, I didn't know that happened. <coughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, let's give some stuff away. I've already got, it's 2.30, so let's go ahead. No Andrew Hutz today, okay. MiFi is a cradle point box. Oh, all right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's start giving some stuff away. So we're going to be giving away two different things today, folks. The first thing we're giving away is 90-day access to the practice questions of your choice from the Total Seminars uh, catalog. So we've got lots and lots of uh, practice questions. Most people like doing A+, plus, F+, plus, or Security+, plus, but we have lots more than that. It's up to you to find out which ones. Just go to www.totalsem.com. Check out the merchant area and see all the different... Uh, uh, total tester products we have and then you pick one so but first you got to win the competition couple of rules on this competition rule number one this competition is not fair I'd like for it to be fair I try to make it fair but you know what sometimes it's not fair the reality is is that you have less than a hundred people in here we give away three days a week and so if you don't win one day just come back who you know it's not that big of a deal uh, also, we tend to want to give the prizes to people who have not won before. Look, if you've won before and you really need a product, well, then compete, for crying out loud. I, I don't, it's okay. Uh, but you could actually reach a point in this game where you win so much, you become what we call Mohand. To be Mohand, which is named after the first person who did this, David Mohan, to be Mohan means you've won so many times that we basically cut you off. So that shows you guys how easy it is to win here. So... Uh, with that attitude in mind, let's, uh, I, I'm about to put up a, a screen, but I want to turn off all the MiFi searching I was doing. <laughs> okay. 
Here we go, guys. Remember, the first person to win, the first person to answer wins. Just because you think you're first, that doesn't mean that's how it shows up on my screen. Let's go ahead and get started. Whoops, let's try that again. Here we go. All right. A company builds a cloud server. Oh, folks, wait, 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 wait. Do, I'm going to show you this, and you have to type the right answer into the, in, 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 to the chat window. Do not type A, B, C, or D. Type up enough of the word, I know what you're talking about. If you just type A, B, C, or D, you're not it. Okay. A company builds a cloud-based server to host a database for the company's primary applications. Okay. The company's administrator must complete required software. Oh, shoot. We already know what this is. The clue here is it's up to me to do software patches and update the server OS. Which of the cloud models would this follow? This one isn't even hard. This one is IAAS. Oh boy, did I do that too fast? <laughs> I totally did that too fast, Dave. Totally. Well, hopefully we got some answers already up there. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got lots of people. Oh, okay. Jay Peterman is getting, Dave Rush does not like Jay Peterman. Oh, sorry guys, I had to, I'm always curious when slightly insane people get on. Uh, Jay Peterman, stop being insane, we'd love to have you on, man. All right, so, uh, but uh, what do we got here? For, uh, let, let's see. Um, ba -ba. All right, so what I've done here is I've typed in, I believe the winner is going to be, in fact, Dave, I got this, we're good. Um, our, our winner is going to be Kiomar Perez, IAAS. Let's talk about why IAS is the winner, first of all. <clears throat> Infrastructure as a service, which is manifested most popularly as a, uh, Amazon Web Services, Amazon S3 services, is you spin up the instance, you define the CPU, you define the RAM, and, and then you define the operating system, and you're in charge, and that, that's why this was easy. The moment they said, <coughs> I was required to do software patches and update the server OS, I instantly knew that was infrastructure as a service. Uh, software as a service is a complete product, so there's nothing to be done there. Uh, and then uh, platform as a service, uh, you're just uploading the code up there and, and you count on stuff underneath it to do software patches and things like that. And it could be public or private. All right. So congratulations. Ta-da. Who did I just say one that? Ah, I forgot already. Kiyomar, K-I-O-M-A-R Perez. You have just won. So congratulations to you. Now, in order to get your prize, you got to jump through a couple of hoops. First, you have to not click on that. There we go. So, Kiarmar Perez, number one, you have to send us an email. That's right, an old school email. Send that to davr at totalsem.com. In that email, include your YouTube name, which is going to be Kiarmar Perez. Inside the body of the email, put your email address. And then third, tell us which practice exam you want. And once you do that, we will send you an email back. You're usually going to use your email address as your logon, and we'll give you a temporary password. Have fun. Congratulations to you, Kiomar Perez. All right. Well, we still got stuff to give away. We're still giving away a voucher here, folks. Let's uh, see if we have any more questions. All these people retracting stuff. So funny. Trey Dilla, when I took the core on A+, I got a question just like this. You did not get that question, but you did get a question. All good. All right. Will Shaw, there you go. Will Shaw being all serious. This is good, Will. Hey, come on, Will. You got to admit, you've been quite the comedian here as of late. So to see you, like, be all... I wasn't going to pass, but I, you know, all good. All very good. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> all right. 
All right, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So what I'm going to do, if this is okay, uh, we are going to give away our CompTIA voucher today. What time is it? Eh, it's 2.40. We don't have to run a full hour if there aren't that many questions. It's always good. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do our last competition of the day. And this time we are giving away a complete... We're going to be giving away, not a complete, we're giving away a CompTIA voucher, all right? This CompTIA voucher is good for any CompTIA exam. There's some kind of issue with the CYSA+, Plus. I don't remember what it is, but everything else, absolutely no problem. This is an international voucher. If you are in a country that is giving these tests, you can, you can compete and get this voucher. The voucher is not a physical thing. I, I guess if you really want to... CompTIA to send you a piece of paper. The voucher is a number, and they'll send you a piece of paper with a number on it, but nobody really cares about the actual voucher. It's just a number, and you're set. Yeah, poor Andre. Is, is Andre Mohand? Andre, Andre de Goyd has been with us a good long time. Danny Tom, beer drinking plus. I like the cut of your jib, young man. Oh, here's Will Shaw finally being a smart aleck. Here's a funny question. I need jumpers to configure a motherboard. Where do I get them? Why, Will, from another motherboard, of course. Preferably the motherboard of that person you don't like. All right. You guys ready to compete for the big money? And again, guys, this voucher uh, is good for any CompTIA exam and in any country where it's being taught. Or, in any country where you can sit for the exam. I don't like that one. Oh, it's a classic. A classic. You guys ready for a classic? All right, I have it. This is another A plus 1001 question. This is a good one. You guys will be happy. All right, remember, it's a multiple choice question. Do not type A, B, C, or D. <coughs> so I need to warn you, all of you guys are going to know the answer to this one. It's too easy, but I've already said it, so we're going to do it. This way too easy one, uh, you better have your fingers on the keyboard if you're trying to get a free A-plus voucher because this one will go very quickly. All right, I've talked enough. Let's do this. Balk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you should do something else. All right, here we go. Intermit intermittent lockups and reboots are most likely caused by A, failing power supply, B, corrupted drivers, C, resource conflicts, or D, bad hard drives. I will give you guys a moment to type in some answers. All right, so I will assume, uh, let's see if we have some answers. Oh, we got lots of people in there, like I figured. Okay, Dave Rush, please help. Dave Rush, help, help. Dave Rush. Dave helps me determine who the winner is, guys. Because sometimes, and I knew this was going to happen. We have a lot of people. All right, let's, let's first of all, let's get the right answer. Da, 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 da. All right, so as I look at this, uh, intermittent, intermittent, boy, that's the secret. I could argue that lockups and reboots are caused by any of these, but intermittent makes it a power supply issue, so I'm pretty sure that's right. Let's take a look. And by the way, this is the total tester product here, folks. Yeah, A. So the answer is A, failing power supply. Oh, okay. So uh, while we're while we're calculating who the correct, who the winner is, I do want to say to all of you, as far as we know, all vouchers have finally been delivered, folks. Especially you new folks, these vouchers can take a few weeks to get to you. So if you're thinking about getting a CompTIA voucher for a test you want to take next week, this is probably not a good idea. Okay, uh, but CompTIA has been very generous giving these out. We really appreciate it. And we want CompTIA to keep doing this. 
giving away free vouchers. So with that attitude in mind, do keep in mind if it takes a little while, we are very cool and we understand. So it's failing power supplies. And lots of people said failing power supplies I would have anticipated. Will Shaw, 404, answer not found. Okay, I think I see who the winner is. I agree, Dave Rush, we have the same person. So folks, the winner of the free CompTIA voucher is none other than Christian. Just Christian, that's all he's got for a name. No last name, no nothing. So where are you, Christian? I wanna make sure I'm not lying. Yes, Christian, congratulations to you. Big round of applause. You have won a free CompTIA voucher. Now, Christian, as you can imagine, these are expensive things and we don't like to just toss them around. So in order to actually get your uh, voucher, you gotta send us an email. Yep, that's right, just like we do with the other one, but it's a different kind of email. All right, so Christian, what you've gotta do, Christian, pay attention. Number one, you gotta send an email to daver at total7.com. Christian, don't panic. All these instructions are also in the chat window as I'm talking. <coughs> in your email, Christian, put your YouTube name, just like it's chosen chat, so Christian. Number two, put your email address in the body of the email. Number three, put your name used on previous CompTIA certifications. Christian, if you've never done a CompTIA certification before, then just give us your legal name. Next, put your country of residence. If you're in the USA, add your state. Next, add the country where you will take the exam. For some people, like my buddy Andre, he may live in Belgium, but he goes to the Netherlands or vice versa to take his tests. So that's why that happens. And then last, your exact exam number. Don't put just A+, plus. say you want like the A+, plus, 220-1002. And uh, congratulations to you, Christian. Folks, those of you who didn't win, remember, we do three of these a week every week. And you can see we don't get that big of crowds. So the chances are you're gonna win. So just come back, that's all you gotta do. And uh, we'd love to give them away to you. All right, let me take some last little pit. <coughs> a couple of people did say a couple things to me, folks. What made that answer failing power supply was the term intermittent. Any of those things could cause uh, reboots, but they wouldn't be intermittent. Lockups and reboots. All right. Good to see so many people competing. That was great. Dagar Wolf, just passed my 1,002 an hour ago. Thanks for your video course. Dagar, congratulations to you. You've done so well. Okay, folks. <coughs> I can't stop coughing. No, don't say it. Uh, all right, so it looks like we're done for today. Folks, we come back on Wednesday. This is gonna be our two year anniversary. We've got huge giveaways. Hey, you get to win a dream date with Mike Myers, huh? That's gotta be exciting for you guys. It'll be fun, now, an hour on the phone, uh, any topic you want. Uh, so it's always, always good to do that. Um, Daniel Klein passed his net, da I passed me net plus. I think Daniel Klein's Irish because he said, congrats, Dagger. I passed me net plus thanks to his course as well. That's not a bad Irish accent. Eh, it's a good fake one. All right. So, guys, please, please show up on Wednesday. It's going to be a huge day. So many fun things to do. Also, do keep in mind that this Friday we're going to have Dave Rush doing his Dave Rush AMA, D-R-A-M-A, Drama, which is a good name for Dave Rush because he's a very dramatic fellow. So we got lots of things going. Definitely show up uh, on Wednesday. It's probably gonna be the biggest single day we've had and uh, very exciting. Folks, this is Mike. I am out of here. I will see you guys soon. And until then, this is Mike saying bye-bye. Bye, kids.